Hello everybody. Um, what we're going to do today is have a quick uh, run through some brass libraries which I use on a almost daily basis. Um, I've ended up with an awful lot of brass libraries for some reason. Um, I think that actually represents the fact that um, brass sampling is probably the cutting edge of where um, things are difficult and the thing which they find most difficult to get right. Um, there are some fantastic libraries out there and they all have their own strengths and weaknesses and quite a lot of the time I end up using more than one library because just a phrase won't always sit right on a particular library for whatever reason and then another library just happens to do it better. But it is difficult because they all have different ambiences and they're all recorded in sometimes in very different um, spaces and that gives a totally different character to the library itself. Um, some of them are incredibly huge and comprehensive. Some of them are very simple in many respects. Um, but that doesn't always um, reflect itself in the quality of the sound. Some of them, you know, the quality of some of the simpler libraries are absolutely fantastic. And there are some hidden gems, hidden gems in some old libraries like East West Gold, but we'll talk about that. Look, I'm not, uh, this isn't a sort of really comprehensive product review. Um, I'm not going to go through every last um, detail of all these libraries, but let's um, let's start with the newest one on the block, actually, which um, is one which I really, really like, which is Berlin Brass. This is an absolutely enormous library. Um, you have all the ensembles, so we've got the ensemble patches here. Um, then you have you don't just have one solo. Uh, instrument. You have four French horns, for example, so that you can put together um, a French horn section where every single articulation, it, it, they are four separate instruments. And it sounds brilliant when you do that. I have not got it set up like that. That is just too complicated, too much RAM, too much everything else. But look at the guy who put these libraries together. He's got a demo where he's written it with four separate instruments, and it does sound absolutely wonderful. The legato sound, is, I mean, on the ensemble patch, it's really nice. I'm... A, Um, there's really nice sustained sounds too. But with brass, I would n try to avoid at all possible costs doing big chords playing with ensemble patches because it just well, it's, it's, it just sounds you get that um, pipe organ effect. So rather than do that, I'd play I'd use the ensemble patch if I'm playing a big un uh, unison line. That sounds great. But if I want, um, t for example, to go to a chord, I would tend to use the, uh, the solo instruments so that you've got one instrument per note. Uh, to, where are they? Here we go. Come on, you can do it. There we are. Right, so, for example, here we've got French horn one. Uh, let's find the Mercato one. Um, there's, um, oh, a sustain, the Mercato one. See, that sounds much more convincing. Um, so you have to alternate between, um, um, and this it's also very true of trombones actually, trombones is particularly true with the um, using solo instruments. Um, for example, where are we going here, let's find, let, I mean you hit, this gives you some idea, I should, I'm hopping about it here, look, let me just give you an idea of the kind of range of articulations you've got, um, uh, and you can see how much there is, um, you know, you've got several different types of, of sustain. You've got a whole load of different types of shorts uh, from Stuckissima. If you wanted to do that uh, triple tonguing thing, and I've tried this a lot now, it's one of the things which is the most difficult to get right. You either have the rep repetitions. Which, is, which works pretty well. Um, I have found most with, with this using the staccatissimo sample to go ba 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 and then hitting the uh, Mercato after that. Not least because if you're actually working on a project where you're going to have a live orchestra, if you use performance samples like this where you go, um, all the orchestrators are going to see is a single note. Whereas actually if you use the staccatissimo sample, so you got 
he's going to see three notes, and he'll know what you mean. So, I mean, it's a small thing, but actually I found that using the staccatissimo sample like that to, to, to go ba da ba is the most is the most effective of any library. It's something I just haven't been able to do before, really convincingly, and I think that sounds much better. There's bells up um, for the, the very, in that very, very brassy sort of sound. Um, they've got the repetitions, they've got triplet repetitions, they've got a whole load of different crescendi and things. Um, all sorts of swells, which I really like. That's the kind of thing which is so powerful because however good your, um, however good your sample, uh, samples are and the dynamic layers, if you try and do those kind of swells, uh, let's go back to a uh, you know, soft sustain. And you do it on the mob wheel. It's, it's not as organic as when somebody actually plays a swell. So the fact that this library has got all these swells for each and every instrument in the French, unbelievable. Really, really impressive. Um, trumpets are great. Um, <laughs> Terrible. What was I playing there? That was a really, really awful. I'm sorry. Again, with the staccatissimo. So, you know, let's put a clip. You can do that, and then you go. That's, that's the note, isn't it? And then you just tidy those up so that timing-wise they work, and you get the effect. You see what I mean? Um, they really blend to work together well. The trombones are fantastic. They're big and warm. So they do those pianissimo. One of the things which a lot of libraries ignore is quiet brass. Very lovely. I really like this. I mean, uh, it's a. It, there's uh, these little swells in here as well. All I'm. Mean, isn't that great? Okay. I mean, it's a very different style of library um, to, for example, um, Hollywood Brass, which is another one which I use a lot. Um, let's find my Hollywood Brass. Um, which, where is Hollywood Brass? Here we go. Um, it was the first of the really, uh, of the big sort of new generation ones. Oh, did Cine Brass come before? Uh. It's not recorded in as ambient a space. It's very, very well programmed. It's quite brass, I mean, it's quite bright and quite brassy, which... It sometimes has a slight, there's a, just a very slightly synthetic sound to it, but it I mean, uh, you shouldn't play chords with a sixth one, uh, uh, as I was doing there, and because it does have that sort of pipe organ effect, so let's just find, I use two French horns a lot, actually. Here we go, this one. The shorts are great. They've got stopped, uh, stopped horns, which I use a lot. Really nice stuff. And staccato. Um, for a lot of action-y sort of stuff, um, Hollywood Brass is my go-to, really, I suppose. We've got very nice um, solo trumpet uh, stuff as well. Uh, the legato's... Uh, where's the solo trumpet legato? With vibrato.
So you won't go wrong with Hollywood Brass. It uh, gives you um, enormous amount of flexibility because of all the, mi the different mic positions. It's a heavy hitter. It's not something which you can run with any great degree of ease on sort of uh, a laptop. But if you're running it off an SSD, the new version of Play, Play 5, will allow you to purge. And so you can overcome some of the enormous memory um, constraints which there are with this because it is uh, quite, um, quite a, it takes quite a lot of memory to get going. Um, for those of you with East West Gold, don't give up because it's, I mean, it might be sort of an old generation library, but you just go and fish out Trombone Portato. It's one of my favorite samples. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? It's got that shape to it. Um, and if the start, it's quite slow to speak, but you can double it up with trombone macato. Put the two together. So you use the macato as the front of the sample. and you use that as the second half. It's nice, isn't it? It's really nice. And you've probably half of you got that. It's all in East West Gold, so it's all there waiting for you just to go and discover it. There's nice horn macatos. There's um, the two trumpet, um, uh, trumpet mute. It's not a harmon mute, it's a straight mute, um, which, and it's a very, very useful sound, um, which I use quite a lot with live brass sections, because it doesn't, it doesn't color the sound very much, but it just allows it to sit back more in the brass section. So, because sometimes, as soon as the trumpets come in, everybody else needs to go for lunch. And you know, it, can be, it can be hard to blend trumpets in with, with horns and things like that. But a straight mute sometimes just allows it to sit back into the section and sounds great. So um, and actually, quite a lot of brass libraries are a bit short on the mutes. I know that Berlin Brass is coming up with another version which is of Berlin Brass, I believe, which is going to be all mutes, which will be fantastic. Uh, I have to go out and buy yet another slave for that. Um, let's move on, because um, I don't have huge amounts of Spitfire Brass, but there's, they have the most beautiful um, legatos. And if what you're looking for is um, that... Here you go, Spitfire Horns. Um, this is the old version. This isn't the brand new one. Uh. It's really lovely. And it's got that um, air horn, um, that um, air hall, lin air lindhurst sound. Some, in the early versions of Spitfire Horns, now corrected in the, the new, um, whatever they call it, the new version, um, some of the dynamic layer, some of the layers, as you went through, were a bit clunky. But um, if you want that soft, very ambient sound, Spitfire is an absolutely brilliant go-to library. For me, it did slightly run out of steam when you wanted that really hard action brass sound. Um, but... For, for those who are writing more soft orchestral, you know, more sort of fantasy, potentially, th that would be a really, really good... You'd, the truth is, any of these libraries, you can get anything out of these libraries you want. Some of them are just lend them... You know, Hollywood Brass lends itself more to action than for soft, gentle sound. You have to do a bit more work with the mic positions and things to get that. Vice versa, Spitfire, with that big ambient sound, lends itself to the big sort of Lord of the Rings sound, probably, but doesn't quite so much that tight bright action sound. Um, let's not forget, um, what else have we not looked at? We haven't looked at, uh, there's Cine Brass in here somewhere. Cine Brass uh, is, it comes in two editions, uh, Cine Brass Normal and Cine Brass Pro. Um, the, the ordinary one, which gives you six horn legato. Sorry. Is really lovely sound. It was recorded in a, I think it was a Sony stage in LA. It's that's absolutely beautiful. Sorry. That's a 
solo horn. Again, they've got some... Um, they give you six horns or two. So... So that's, this is their staccato. It's a very, very good sound. And often in the past, when I've, if I've been predominantly using Hollywood brass and I got one of those lines which just didn't work, cine, cine brass is where I go next. They've got really nice uh, trumpets. The, the, the main... I mean, there's obviously, it's a much smaller library than Berlin Brass or something like that. It doesn't have anything like the range of articulations um, that the huge libraries do. But it, the actual quality of the sound, you can't fault. Uh, depends on what, how many... Very, very nice sound. Bass trombone. Isn't that lovely, hey? I mean, the, there are others out there. I mean, those are the ones I use most of the time. As you can, you've probably noticed, I've got um, other things knocking around in here. I mean, I use Albion. Sometimes Albion comes to the rescue where nothing else works, just because of the way it's recorded in the same room at the same time. Albion 5 has got some beautiful brass sounds on it. Absolutely lovely. Um, the Metropolis. I've got it. I'm not the biggest fan, to be honest. It's sort of trailer sound, and it's increasingly not something I do as much. Um, I mean, there's, there's, uh, oh, well, the, you know, you've got the, here the cage brass effects, which is an 8 do thing. Uh, I'm not sure I've got it turned on now. I mean, uh, quite a lot of the special effects I don't leave turned on all the time, just because I don't use them day in and day out. Um, Symphobia. Really good effect in Symphobia. And there's also one or two very nice, uh, oh, the light there, the, the brass uh, Sforzando. For that James Bondy sort of sound. Which, you know, it's an old library now, but it's, as I've said many times before, old libraries often come to the rescue when the new ones run out of steam. Um, so we've had a look at some Spitfire, we've had a look at Berlin Brass, Hollywood Brass, um, and Cine Samples. I mean, you've got a stonk load of choice out there for um, your every brass need. And there's more brass libraries coming. There's Century Brass coming from 8DO, um, which we will uh, look forward to. Um, for me, um, if I was starting from scratch and I had no libraries, um, I would probably... And I've got... And I had the bandwidth and the... And the I'd, if I was going to choose one right now, I'd choose Berlin Brass, I think, as uh, the best out there, the most powerful. But you do need quite a lot of space to run it. Um, it splits the difference between where you are with Hollywood Brass and where you are with Spitfire, I think. Um, but that said, I haven't played the new um, uh, Spitfire all-in-one um, brass library, which sounds fantastic. They all sound fantastic. And if you're buying you know, what used to be known as a next-generation library, uh, you will be able to get the sound you want out of it. They all have the potential to sound absolutely amazing. It's just their natural habitat is somewhere sometimes slightly different. Hollywood Brass is recording in a relatively small room. Um, Spitfire is, is recording in a huge room, very ambient sound. Um, Cine Samples, I think, was done at Sony, which is, is a very... The ambience, for me, is almost perfect on Cine Samples. It's got that Hollywood scoring stage sound to it, which is the, the Michael Giacchino sound, which is really popular at the moment. Um, Berlin Brass is slightly more ambient than that. Uh, if anything, I'd prefer a slightly less ambient sound, but, you know, you've got a ton of choice out there, a ton of choice. A friend was recommending Adventure Brass to me, which is not one I've played with. So um, you will, in the fullness of time, probably need more than one, and I haven't even begun to look at the, the jazz libraries like um, Broadway Brass and Chris Hine. Chris Hine is my go-to, frankly. It's absolutely stunning. If you want really good big band brass sound, Chris Hine has got it nailed. Um, but look, I think I've warbled on for more than enough time. Um, if you're interested in all this kind of stuff, then why not get our How to Write Film Music um, guide? It's a little 10-page guide. Even if you've been at it for a while, maybe there's something in there. It may give you a new aspect on, an old, uh, on, on things you think you know already. Um, 
And we just produced a new course called Templates in a Weekend, where we talk a lot about how to put your template together. Um, it's, I, I take you through the whole thing from scratch um, and give you answers to some of the questions we get asked most often about things like reverbs and routings and using slaves and all the rest of it. Um, so Templates in a Weekend, inexpensive course, get you going, sort out many of your template woes, I would hope. Um, and so if you're looking to build your template up, check out our um, How to Write Film Music and check out uh, Template in a Weekend. Those are the two things which will help you most. Anyway, but from me for now, until next time, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.